Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. UFC Halifax has got a fucking hell of a fight on. Elias Fiodoro, so you're going to take him on Cesar Ferreira now. I love a this. dead man. Does his name, doesn't, sorry to interrupt, but doesn't matter what his name is. He's a dead man. He is a dead man, right? C- C- uh, Cesar, dead man Ferreira. There we go. There, there we go. Look, I love the matchup, man. I do. Uh, I, I, when it got announced, I, I was very happy to see this. I think stylistically, it's a great matchup for you with your style of fighting. Uh, but obviously, since your last bout, you've had a bit of Christmas time, a bit of relaxing, a bit of R&R. And also, you've had a bit of uh, shampoo adverts going on. And like we talked about the last time, things are going pretty good. Things must be going well. I, I imagine you're physically healthy as well. No injuries, no bumps and stuff that stop you as well how's life in general well it's good um in many ways um again i think what the kind of difference with me and why i maybe had so much time off uh obviously i wanted a fight in toronto that didn't happen and i'm bitter as fuck about that but we'll move on um and the more important thing is i've been able to set up like you said uh my sponsorship with Burt. um it's now going to be a, a global thing too so i am now the world ambassador this hair is the world ambassador and they pay me a pretty bad they pay me handsomely let's just say <laughs> um no but with that being said i'm also growing i'm a martial artist through and through i still there's 24 hours in the day and uh even with uh me you know talking about hair and uh what do you call it, setting up other projects that i have i'm still training twice a day and uh getting 11 sessions in a week so I, I, I'm not a one-track mind individual, no slight against any mixed martial artist that thinks that I'm a, I'm a fighter and that's what I am. But I'm also thinking of the 10-point plan. I, yeah. I don't want to get hit in the head forever. And as much as everyone wants to be a champion, not everyone is. And yeah. I also, again, on top of that, I am a broadcaster for Hard Knocks Championship. Uh, I will be, I did the previous one uh, in the middle of camp, but I still got some training involved. Um, and then I will do their, their follow-up one in March, which will be on... St. Patrick's Day, so I will be <laughs> bloated afterwards, <laughs> and I will be joining the hell out of, uh, uh, what's it called, my stay, and it looks like, actually, they're going to be getting a lot of the SVG guys uh, out there. Nice. For a couple of fights, so that's what they're going to, it makes sense, they're setting it up for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, How yeah, hilarious definitely. is that? That is brilliant. <laughs> that's but, a um, great idea. But, uh, but, um, no, with that being said, I'm um, also, again, uh, TNS, TSN TSN Analyst, which is essentially the ESPN for Canada. Um, I'm the uh, UFC correspondent, UFC analyst. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of that. Um, we have UFC 209 is when I reinstate my roles, I think. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, building the brand that is the Spartan and uh, still training. Now, the analyst bit I want to ask you about, have you found by doing that, you kind of see the game a little bit differently? Because obviously you want to have to sit there and watch a bit of footage and do a bit of research before you go on there and... Are you starting to look at the game a little bit differently than you did before? Do you find that you're articulating fights a bit more, breaking it down, and even breaking down yourself more? Um, yeah, so um, basically, I get, to, uh, I get to really analyze fighters and understand them, especially with uh, Hard Knocks. One of the cool things about them is they actually put on the pay-per-views the amateurs. Um, it's oh, a cool. really uh, different thing. Yeah, so they get, they get exposure, they get built up, and... You get to know them before mm. they become pro, and you get to see them build throughout their career. And, you know, they throw a little bit more caution to the wind, and, <laughs> uh, and those fights are more slobber knockers uh, than, uh, than uh, I guess, maybe, a, you know, a more refined, uh, polished uh, martial artist will, you know, uh, trying to have a strategy, and it's yeah. that's what will just fucking go. Um, but you get to really see and understand uh, why... People do certain things. Um, I've, I've very much been able to see this almost imaginary line mm. where it's kind of there's a halfway between between two fighters, and whoever crosses that uh, and commits to do so, mm. um, in many ways gets to uh, gets to impose their will, or is more able to impose their will. Mm. So there's definitely a trans. Um, there's definitely um, uh, a tra- uh, what do you call it? A aspect of being a commentator that is definitely a plus uh, to be a mixed martial artist. Awesome, because that's uh, it's something I was curious about. Because I wondered how it affected. Because obviously Dominic Cruz is on there and analyzing. Yep. You wonder, you know, he's he obviously said it benefits him. And I'm seeing, I love how to see how people are affected, especially Dan Hardy. If he ever gets his, if he ever gets back in the heart, 
I'm super curious about how he fights when he goes in there again because obviously all the analysis that he's been doing for so long mm -hmm. and obviously we know what his style of fight was like before he'd just stand put his feet down and swing and uh, he'd knock your ass out if he got you but uh, you know who knows what he'll be like now maybe he might do a new tactician because he does a yoga have you seen some of the stuff Dan Hardy does with the yoga because his missus is like a yoga instructor oh man Dan Hardy is flexible that dude can oh that's yep. woo. Like yoga is the bomb don't get me wrong I love yoga I need to do more of it, obviously. Yep. But, uh, it's super good for flexibility. Uh, so, look, let's talk about TriStar. I think it's a power... Let's say, call it the powerhouse of TriStar. Some of the Brits are over there training all the time. It's gonna tra you're, you're having a good time there as well, training. But with your training, you're looking to go and travel. I know you like to travel a bit. Are you going to try and incorporate your traveling to go to different gyms around, maybe not just, obviously, the US, but maybe abroad and stuff like that? Have you thought about doing that? Uh, I've already have. I, I, I've been to Nogueras in Brazil twice. Uh, I've been to Milton Vieira's at Rio Fighters. Um, also, I've been to Thailand with uh, Tiger Muay Thai, and yeah. I plan to do more of it. Uh, this summer, uh, I'm going to go back to Greece and see some family. Yeah. Uh, but on the hop over, I'm probably going to go to Amsterdam. So Ooh, uh, that, nice. that's definitely the plan. Uh, Amsterdam, yeah. nice. Smith's Gym, is it maybe you're going to go to or someone like that? That would be good. Smith's Gym there, kick, uh, Muay Thai, that'd be Dutch kickboxing, sorry. Maybe go to a coffee shop, who knows? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, exactly. <laughs> don't, you no, saw, don't but, even know uh, where you are. But yeah, man, that's... that's uh, exactly. Well, that's the thing, but it's no, uh, expanding your mind, bro. That's beautiful to see. Beautiful to see it. Yeah, um, yeah no, uh, again, that's what got me into mixed martial arts. Um, I The fighter's journey. I'm, uh, I'm trying to incorporate that in my life. As much as possible i get to travel also with work like we talked about yep. i go to calgary all the time i'll be fighting in halifax i live quasi in uh, montreal but i'm originally from toronto mm -hmm. uh it allows me to travel i i don't mind um i don't mind kind of living out of a backpack slash suitcase and uh luckily either does the missus yeah so uh again uh i get to travel and have a good time yeah, I was going to say Belfast as well. You travelled to Belfast. Yep. and Was there. We had we stopped a... over in London on yeah. the way over. Yes, I we saw that, yeah. Time. We had a couple of pints ourselves. <laughs> well, I had the pints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a good, we had a good I time, had I have to say, people. It was a good night. It was a good time. We had a good time yep. rolling in jiu-jitsu and all sorts. It was a good yep. weekend. You tried out some cuisines. I, I want to say that. Yes. You tried out some special yes. dishes. We ate food. We yeah. ate food. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah I it's, food. it's good it's good times. It's good times, brother. And and you know what I love about it is the fact that uh I, I love the fact that you you're so approachable with fans. Uh not every fighter is, but I know it's whenever fans I remember <laughs> Do you remember the the there's the guy who didn't know the weight classes and stuff, he didn't know who you all who you you and Paul were and we were talking to you because he just obviously maybe thought you guys were fans and that and it's just Oh man, it's but then again, it's the fact that you guys are just so welcoming. You and Paul were there, and it was it was just a good atmosphere. I, I quite enjoyed Belfast. I thought myself, I thought it was quite a nice atmosphere. It was a good time. Uh, the Q and A was fun, apart from the woman. There was one. There's always one. There was one woman who was drinking. She was a little bit just annoying. Just wasted. Just wasted. <sighs> yeah, she was well Ooh. wasted. I was like, there's some people that need to be quiet. It was past not... noon. To her defense, it wasn't. It was past noon. To her defense, <laughs> that is. So, yeah, it uh, is. Yeah. Called, no. Yeah. A <laughs> so look Cesar Ferreira um, like, well, let's, let's just look at him as an aspect of a, as a fight because he's tried to drop down to 170 he's tried that at 170 now that's a hell of a cut down to 170 yeah and he didn't have a good time there that dude went to sleep uh, do you see that something then for you because with your kicks you know you like to throw your kicks in variable ways and your striking do you think that's a, a definitely a goal there for you that kind of you can catch him with. He's quite aggressive with the oncoming strikes. Uh, Sam Alvey showed that as well. You know, with the with the way how he's so aggressive coming forward, quick. There's the counters there. Is that something you've been taking note of? For sure. Uh, fun fact: This is also my fifth fight uh, in the UFC against the Southpaw. Five out of six. So this is not. This is in many ways not my first rodeo. Um, the Sam Alvey fight. I obviously showed that I can shut down anyone's game, mm -hmm. and uh, now. Uh, having a win under my back, I'm looking forward to being a lot more aggressive. Mm. I see um, I see Caesar in many ways being a better version of someone I've already fought. Uh, his name was Roger Navarez, and I broke that man's hand in mm. half. So I'm looking forward to not necessarily breaking his hand because <laughs> I don't look I don't look to hurt anyone, but uh, still that same pressure monster. I think yeah. Caesar, like you mentioned, he's been knocked out four times. 
um, that has to go through his head. Mm. Although, uh, many ways, I'm not necessarily a power puncher. I've been working on something the last uh, six months um, in many ways. Because, again, even when you win, you got to go back to the drawing board. And I think with, uh, with um, Sam, I showed many ways. Um, again, I did what I needed to do. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? I did I – did, um, all I could with what he was giving me. Uh, in many ways, he wanted me to run into his punches. That was mm. the dumbest thing anyone would ever done. Yeah. And it shows. Look, he's on a four-fight win streak. Yeah. Uh, I think I showed the difference between chess and checkers. Um, it won't be my marquee fight. Mm. Um, no one's ever going to look at that and be like, that was the greatest fight ever. But at the same time, I cashed my check, and I beat someone with three times the amount of uh, actual experience on me. Yeah. He has 20-plus actual knockouts under his career. Um, and again, uh, I beat him. Uh, with that being said, uh, looking back on it, I would definitely say that um, I was overly concerned about not making the same mistakes against that I did against Tiago yes. in regards to holding something, yeah. holding something too hard that I didn't go on the offense on something. Yeah. When I like, I was so much stronger than Sam. I should have just bent him over and just kneed him in the face, uppercutted him in the face when I had him against the cage. But I didn't want to make the same mistakes that I did. Yeah. Now that I have uh, my first uh, back on a win streak mm. and looking to make it the next 12, I'm looking to take it and I'm looking to finish Jesus Ferreira. Yeah. And that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. I think that's what I mean. I think the kind of opponent that he is, he gives you that opportunity to finish him. The, his style alone, you know, and there's nothing wrong with his style. The dude is game, you know, and he's obviously won fights. He's lost fights, but at the same time, he's, he's very aggressive and coming forward, which is kind of ideal for someone yep. with your strike range. You know, the, the kind of what I like about your striking, Elias, is the fact that you're variable. You know, you're not sitting there just pumping out a jab, which there is nothing wrong with a jab. Do not get me wrong. There is nothing wrong with yep. a jab. A jab is a beautiful art form. Something that people don't really work on a lot. But the fact that you mix mm -hmm. it up so much, you're a, the best way to put it is you're a pain in the ass for someone who's defending <laughs> you yep. because you're striking so variable. It's not like if you're throwing a jab, I can yep. sit there and work around that. But then you just throw these kicks and you're like, dude. And then, But it's not the same kicks. You vary strikes and it's just a pain in the ass. And it, you know, But that's good. It gets guys thinking. That's what makes you kind of... For sure. An awkward puzzle to fix, so to, to, yep. to suss out, and that's a good, 100%. it's a great strength to have 100%. for you. So yes, you, no, one hundred percent. Now you've been 100%. working. No, Sorry, go, go ahead, bro. Sorry, what were we gonna say? You go, no, no, no you go. You, you, no, no, I was, I was just gonna um, say about your, the stuff you've been working on for six months. Maybe that might be incorporated into kind of your kind of variable striking with the kind of finishing potency. No, I, I like I said. Um, I think in many ways I thought the I fought the poor man's version of him already with Roger Novares. Um, I think uh, Caesar's obviously um, more dangerous. I think he's stronger, more athletic uh, than Roger. I think he, um, in many ways, has a obviously a better or more you know experienced career. But I think the difference um, with Roger and uh, Caesar. We're on the negative side with uh, Caesar that he'll be stepping in mm. is he can't have confidence in that chin of his. Mm. Um, he's been knocked out four times, and I'm going to make it four or five. Um, in many ways, um, he is riding a three fight win streak against completely kickboxers. Mm. Um, I think uh, the guys that he has beaten are tomato cans on the ground that I wouldn't fall for the same mistakes. I think I'm going to. Um, do what I do, become a pressure monster, mm. uh, have a grind, and just output uh, way more than Caesar can handle. I, I think if you look at our stats, I think his uh, you know strike per minute or something like that is one point nine or whatever like that. We're minus three point something. Yeah. Um, I think I am uh, a much more intimidating uh, fighter than he's been winning against, and I'm going to end his three fight win streak. Uh, with that being said, he's a tough test. Um, even with the chin, I think um, he has confidence uh, moving in back into the win column. But I, I think he has, again, fought tough people. But when shit hit the fan, he hit the floor. Yeah. And I think uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add another one of those notches. And I, and I just honestly, like, this is the best camp that I've had since, um, I want to say, um, The Ultimate Fighter. Where yeah. I fought another southpaw. Um, and again, that was a very dominant performance that I'm looking to repeat in a different way. I think um, Caesar um, adds more looks to it, uh, looks to to 
uh, deal with to solve mm. than someone like Roger, like I yeah. mentioned, or even Sheldon, like I fought. Yeah. But um, I think in many ways, I'm going to break them mentally and then physically. Now, the middleweight division, at the moment, it's a little bit stuck in the sense of Bisping with the injury. Te you're a bit torn because everyone's thinking it should be Yo Romero or Jacare. And Jacare's like, I'll fight anyone and I'll just go and destroy yeah. them until I get my shot of Bisping. But it must be quite interesting because you got to look at Derek Brunson lost his bout to Anderson Silva, albeit a bit dubious. But Anderson Silva's a name out there that he's, he just wants to fight. And, and yeah. for the guys like yourselves, anyone who's pushing, like, say, even top, any guy in the top 20, in the middleweight division, top 20, must be sitting there thinking, there's a chance I could get a fight with Anderson Silva. Great marketability, fighting him. It's a great name mm -hmm. to fight against. He's a legend anyway in the sport. But there's also some great matchups just thrown around the middleweight division at the moment. I'm quite excited about some of the names that are coming through there. For you as a fighter, do you look at that as well and get quite excited by the kind of depth that's starting to come into the middleweight division? Because at one point, it looked like there was a bit, there was a bit of a gap between the top five and then everyone else now it's starting to get to the point where dudes are just knocking people out johnny hendrix is joining the middleweight ranks now depending on how it goes with Hector lombard you know but it's just it's quite interesting times no 100 percent um obviously again it, it's the way it kind of goes um it's a little different um and it's obviously building i think this happened a lot in regards to a transition with uh uh, someone like Anderson Silva, who you mentioned, who mm -hmm. lost. And once that happened, the fold of uh, middleweight kind of started to open up. And obviously, there's a huge opportunity there. Um, obviously, I got a tough task in front mm -hmm. of me, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting that, that victory. And then from there, I'm probably going to call someone out. I have a couple of ideas, a couple of plans. Um, but uh, with that being said, um, I still got a tough task uh, in less than a week, and I'm looking to get victory and then take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. No, I was going to say, because that's what I mean. It's, it's, it's quite exciting times for you to think about if you're in the middle where you go, look, get a, good, get a couple of wins. And there's just, there's, there's so many good fights to be made. And like you say, you call a couple of names out. And the UFC are probably going to be like, yeah, we'll match you up with that. Because you make the, their life a lot easier. You kind of pre-make the trash talk and wait for it. It's good for them. Uh, at least I can't wait to see it happen. I'll be tuning in. I am actually going to, like I say, we spoke before, I'm going away to train at a different gym, but that night, awesome. I'm actually watching an MMA, I'm actually helping, I'm going to be at a, a live show in the UK, an MMA show, uh, called BC MMA, awesome. which is, Arnold Allen is being um, helped out with that show as well, you can ask Arnold about it, they, uh, I'm actually going to be doing some media stuff when I'm there, so that's going to be quite fun to do. Awesome! Yeah, that's so, yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit of fun with it, well, and then I'm going to be training, but when I'm there, at night time, I'll be getting Wi-Fi up. I'll be tuning in for the fights. I'll be watching you throw down my man. Definitely, I'll be I'll be jumping all over that. But I, I want to say thanks for coming on again, as always, Elias. I love speaking to you. I love the time that you give me. It's honestly, it's very much appreciated, and it was great hanging out with you in Belfast. Uh, before I let you go, though, you may have one or two social media things that people could jump onto. Maybe. Do you want to let yeah. people know what yeah. they are, bro? Hey, brother. Always a pleasure, uh, and the pleasure was definitely mine when we got to hang out in uh, Belfast. And I uh, hope our paths meet again, definitely. obviously in person. Uh, we are doing it now via the beauty of technology. Yeah. But looking forward to the next time we get to go and hit the town together. Um, what I and and hell training again. Fuck um, yeah. But obviously, uh, as always, you can find me at Elias Theodoro on either Instagram or uh, uh, Twitter, and then Facebook. You got the the fan page as well which is Elias the Spartan Theodore so um, thank you everyone uh, for tuning in uh, hope uh, everyone also tunes into the fight and I'm looking forward to showing everyone what I've been working so hard on and give your sponsors a shout because you can't do that in the UFC because you can only say Reebok <laughs> so when you're doing these you get a chance to give <laughs> well <laughs> now <laughs>
condition. The best two and one, the original two and one, hurt <laughs> plus. Um, what I would also say is, uh, again, um, Tribeca Finance Corporation. Uh, Corporation. Uh, there are a lot of people that um, basically support me. And again, one of the important things after my first loss, uh, uh, they doubled down on me. Uh, mm. In many ways, uh, people. I found it when when you lose. People stop answering calls. Yeah. Um, luckily, I have very great uh, sponsors who, even at the highs and the lows, uh, support me. Um, so I, I can't thank them enough, especially Vanilla Frosting, which was the breakfast of champions today. <laughs> Only 100 calories of gains. 100 gains. Oh, gains. Man. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the gun show. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, looking forward to kick some ass. Boom. Boom.